Hey guys, welcome back to the Glide Tutorial. We're now on the fifth episode, and this is where we're going to start getting a little bit serious right here. We are going to start saving our data. So we know we don't really have anything to save right now, but um, as you can tell on the menu, we have our color selection and also our trail selection. So these are going to be to customize our player, to customize our little plane there. So we need to keep track of what is available to us and also what we selected. So this is also why we're going to be looking into saving first. We're not going to be doing the whole save part in this single episode since it's uh, it's quite complicated actually if you've never done saving before. But we're going to introduce it slowly and hopefully you guys can understand how it works. So the way we're going to go about saving our data in this game is through the player pref. We're going to be saving everything under a single entry, a XML file actually, and uh, we're simply going to serialize one class. Now. This might not seem secure, but what we can do to make it secure in the end is to encrypt it as much as we can. So as of right now, just to make sure everything works properly and we can actually visualize our data if we need to, we're not going to be encrypting anything, we're going to be encrypting at the very end of this tutorial. However, we are going to be serializing a class. So talking about the class, let's right click on script and create a new C -sharp script. This one is going to be the save state. That is the class we're actually going to serialize. In this class, we want to have the bare minimum. So let's just get rid of all the using statement. Let's get rid of the model behavior as well. And let's just have a class like this. Now, everything that goes inside of this class is going to be uh, something we save. So let's start with the easiest one, public int gold. And let's just put a random number right now of something like one, two, three. The reason I'm doing this is to test out. So everything that we actually put in that later on, so say we're gonna try to save um, like a boolean, we are simply going to create a public boolean in here and it's going to save it in the end. Okay, so we have our save state, of course, like I said, we're going to be coming back to this really soon, but right now, just imagine that everything that goes inside of this save state is something we're going to be saving. Right, now we're going to go back on the Unity game and we're going to create a new C -sharp script again. This one is going to be the save manager. Now the reason these two are split is because we don't want to be serializing um, the different classes that goes inside of the save manager, such as the awake, the save, the load, all the kind of function that we we can't really serialize. So um, that's why they are split. And um, the way we're going to go about accessing each other is simply by using a public static instance for the manager and also a public a public save state for the actual state itself. So let's go ahead and at the top here, we're gonna be declaring a public save state. We're also going to be declaring a public static save manager instance, so we can access it from pretty much anywhere in the game. That's gonna be really useful when you just wanna, when you just wanna quickly save on the go. So in a private void awake now, we're gonna be saying instance is equal to this to make sure we do have our instance. Now the save manager is going to be doing two things. It's going to be able to save and also to load. So the first one is going to be save. Let's do save the whole state of this script of the actual of this save state script to the player pref. So that's pretty much what it does here. And we're going to do that in a public void save function. Make sure it's public because we want to be calling it from other places at all time. Okay, so what we usually do right here is we do a player pref set string and then you put a key in this case let's just put save and then here you would put a very long string containing all your data that you manually parse or something like that um, however in here what we want to be doing is actually put the serialize save state class now the only problem we have at the moment is that we don't really have any function that helps us serialize our class we don't have any uh, parser that's going to help us serialize this so let's just skip it for now we're going to come back in a moment just quickly to um, type down the the load function. So load the previous save state from the player pref, which is pretty much just the same exact thing, but uh, load is only going to be called at the beginning. So let's do a private, oh, sorry, a public void load, and in the load function, and the first thing we're going to be checking in the load function is uh, do we already have a save state? So player pref has key save, so do we already have a save? And if we do, we're gonna go ahead and just read it. To read it, all we'll do is state is equal to 
and then here we need to deserialize so deserialize serialize our class and this is to transform our string back to an actual class the save state however like i said we do not have anything to do that just yet so let's just go in the else statement so assuming that we never actually save the game what we're going to be doing is to create a new state so a new save state and then we're going to be saving right away so we do have something uh, let's also write down something um, in the console as well so no save file found creating a new one okay so everything right here looks pretty good the only thing we're missing in this code to make it um, work well not to make it work but to make it more logic is that in the awake at the very beginning let's actually load our save file now if you guessed it already the save manager is going to be on a um, on a don't destroy on load inside of the preloader scene so do we have an object that doesn't get destroyed I believe we do not have one right now so we're gonna be creating one let's go ahead and create one um, that is going to be our save manager right here and let's drag and drop the save manager go back in here really quickly and let's do a don't destroy on load game object this way we can actually access this um, save manager from anywhere in our code and we know it exists as long as we start the game using our preloader of course okay so everything should be technically working of course this part right here doesn't work because we don't have any way to serialize and also deserialize but the whole logic here makes sense so what we need to do at this point is to find a way to take this save state right here this object save state and find a way to actually convert all of this into a string and then whenever we load is to find a way to convert a string back into an object that is a save state what I'm going to do right here because I don't want to be putting that inside of the save manager is I am going to create a new script again and this one is going to be a um, I like to call those the helper script now if you open up the helper script what I'm going to do is just get rid of everything again I also get rid of mono behavior we don't need that and let's turn this class into a public static class what the helper is going to do in this case is any anywhere in your code if you need some um, help doing really redundant operations such as math operation or in this case uh, serialize and deserializing some classes this is what the helper is here for it's going to actually give you an easy way to do something with a string or with a class or all that kind of good stuff in this case we need to do two things with the um, the helper first the serialize well actually let's do serialize first it makes a little bit more sense and also the serialize so this code right here is going to be a little bit complicated but just bear with me because it is going to help you serialize and also deserialize any class uh, that you want because we're going to be using the uh, template operator so public static string serialize and we send in a t in parameter so uh, any types basically that's the template operator so this t to serialize that is the hardest word to write for a Frenchman okay so serialize there we go <laughs> sorry about that all right so the way we're gonna be serializing this is using XML so at the very top right here let's do a using statement we're gonna do uh, we're gonna be using system XML uh, serialization might actually need to include system.io using system.io and there we go now we have everything we need let's go down here and do XML serializer and for some reason my references are broke let me just start over again and here it is so let's do XML serializer and then let's just call it XML is equal to a new serializer type of and then we put our template in here and then we're gonna be creating a string writer Let's call it writer is equal to a new string writer and then we go ahead and we serialize so XML serialize and we serialize the string so in this case that is the writer and then the to serialize string and finally we return the writer to string 
And now this is how we turned any data type, any class that we had into a single string. Now let's go in the deserialize section and do the exact same thing, but in reverse. So public static string, or sorry, public static T, because we're returning a special type, deserialize uh, lies with the template T, this string to deserialize. So it's literally the hardest word to write. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing here. I'm just going to copy this over. And then we need to have a string reader instead of a string writer. So reader is equal to a new reader to deserialize. And we simply finish by doing a return, the template. And then we do XML deserialize with the reader itself. And that's how we serialize and deserialize. Those functions are quite hard to understand at first. Um, and even for me, I have trouble reading through them really fast. So that's why my explanation might have not been the best, but they work like a charm. Now, if we quickly head back into the save manager and just replace um, these lines right here. So the player prep set string save. And now we need to actually save our state. So the way we're going to go about this, since we have our helper class now, we're going to say helper and then serialize. And we serialize the save state. And then the to serialize is going to be the state itself, the one we have um, locally in the class. And this way, we just turn our state into a string right here. And now when we have to read this, we are going to do state is equal to helper deserialize save state. And then the string we want to deserialize is actually the one we load from um, the player pref. So we need to go ahead and just do a player pref get string right here. So player pref, we do a get string, and the string is going to be the same one we save up there. So save with small letters. This way, everything should be working. And just to make sure everything works, what I feel like doing right here is um, let's actually try and do a debug.log on the actual string we're going to try and serialize. So this thing here. So if we just put that there um, temporarily just to test it out, I'm going to head back inside of my game. And do we have our save manager? Yes, it's right here. When I press play, I should be able to see my save state at the bottom right here. And it says, no save file found. We're creating a new one, which is great that's actually supposed to happen. And then afterward, uh, after doing the load, it says debug.log, and then we get a XML document right here. Let's actually pull this up so we can actually read it. And it says gold one, two, three. So it was able to actually save this properly. And we just got our XML serialization working. So guys, that is actually where we are going to end today's episode. Hopefully you picked up some skill. I know we didn't do anything visual in the game. I know we didn't add any gameplay, but we've created a save file and a way to serialize and also deserialize that save file. And that thing is priceless. So you can be using this in any games you make. Now it's not 100% secured right now, but at the end of this tutorial, we're gonna be encrypting it to make it more secure. So hopefully guys, uh, you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like on the video. Always appreciate it. Share it with your friends so we can all be making games and I can be having more watch time and then spend more time. And you know, that's just, you give me watch time, I give more time to this and we just keep on making games forever. And then we eventually die because that's the cycle of life. Um, yeah, hopefully you didn't make it to that part. By then you should have clicked that video on the screen.